This fraction represents the probability of this volcano in Naples erupting, causing catastrophic results. Do you know which volcano I'm talking about? And what in the world is this fraction? How do we calculate this probability? And after we do it, is it actually going to be able to prevent the catastrophe? The answers to these questions may surprise you. Let's go down to Naples, Italy, also known as Napoli in Italian. Most people know about Vesuvio, a famous and active volcano that last erupted as recently as 1944. But of course, it's most famous for burying the city of Pompeii, which we now have an archaeological site at, with everything well preserved. Sophia and I have been there and saw how the whole city was stuck in time. Imagining people dying this way is a scary thought on its own. But what I want to talk about is a much, much, much bigger volcano, located just to the left of Vesuvio, called Campi Flegrei. In the year 39,000, it had one of the biggest eruptions in all human history wiping out any life within a 100 kilometers or 62 miles radius. Just to give you an idea, the eruption was at the very least 100 times more powerful than that of Vesuvio in 79 AD when Pompeii happened. Anyway, swipe 41,000 years and the volcano is showing steady activity. I know it last erupted in the 1500s. Yes, the point is, the eruptions are not very frequent but they have the potential to be significantly more catastrophic than the one expected by Vesuvius. The question is, which probability can best predict its eruption? Bayesian, frequentism, or propensity probability? Well, before answering that, we need to answer a very different question that seems completely unrelated, but it is not. Will the sun rise tomorrow? It comes from a question posed by Richard Price in 1763. This is the percentage that expresses the likelihood of the sun not rising tomorrow. And of course, that means that there is a 99.990002% chance that it will. I mean, things like that seem obvious to us. Of course it will. But how do you prove that mathematically? I mean, how do I even get to this calculation? And why do we need to be able to prove that mathematically if the answer is so obvious? Well, that's because there are urgent and life-threatening questions out there that require this answer, like the Campi Flegrei. The first person to come up with that very specific percentage was Pierre Laplace in his study of Bayesian probability. Bayesian probability is a way of interpreting probability. It's kind of like when you have a package of information and you make probable conclusions based on that package. Like, say you have a jar containing 50 red and 50 yellow gummies. If you were to randomly pick one gummy from the jar, the probability of picking a red gummy would be 50% based on the proportion of red gummies in the jar. Now, imagine that someone who can see into the jar gives you a hint that they see more red gummies near the top of the jar. With this new information, you can update your belief and probability about picking a red gummy, because new evidence suggests it's more likely. Let's apply that to the original question of, will the sun rise tomorrow? Laplace considered the long history of daily sunrise as evidence. Using the rule of succession, he argued that if the sun has risen k times in the past, the probability that it will rise again tomorrow is the fraction k plus 1 over k plus 2. That is calculated as the integral over the interval 0, 1 of p to the power of k plus 1 divided by the integral of p to the power of k. Here, p is the long-run frequency of sunrise. In other words, the sun rises 100 times p percent of days. Of course, we cannot know p exactly, and that's why it is treated as a uniform probability distribution. If you have any questions or you want a deeper dive into these calculations, you can ask me in the comment section. I'll search for the answer and reply to you as soon as possible. So for instance, if the sun has risen 10,000 times before, the probability it rises again tomorrow is 10,001 divided by 10,002, which is approximately 99.990002%. Doesn't that leave us with a 0.01% chance that it won't rise tomorrow? And what's the probability that people will like and subscribe to this channel anyway? 100%, I'm pretty sure. Now, for your question of whether there is a 0.01% of chance that the sun won't rise tomorrow, there is a catch there. Laplace acknowledged that this calculation might overlook broader physical knowledge about the natural world. Thus, he argued that the more information he has about the world, the better the approximation would become. You know, though, that's not how we studied probability in school. I mean, I got taught the most boring stuff. The simplest example would probably be flipping a coin. 
Since each flip is independent, calculating head or tails each time will give you a 50% chance for each side. It seems like it would work for the sun question. It did rise every day in the past. What you've just described is known as frequentist probability. And yeah, if we applied it to Campi Flegrei, we'd end up with the calculation that it will erupt in another 10,000 years. But of course, we know this to be a very poor assumption. It is the most intuitive type of probability for us, because it is the first type of probability that humanity came up with. Its first foundation was built by Aristotle in his work Rhetoric, where he said, the probable is that which for the most part happens. It's also known to be part of classical statistics. Don't get me wrong, it's not a bad way of calculating probabilities. I mean, if we take a coin and flip it a hundred times, we could also ask for the force of the finger, wind speed, dust, etc. But it's a necessary information and the frequentist approach performs just as well. But when it comes to predicting disasters, it's not the best approach. Now, when it comes to comparing the Bayesian probability, there is only one competitor, propensity probability, first founded by Charles Sanders Peirce, but better developed by philosopher Karl Popper. Let's take the example of the sun again. If we asked him, will it rise tomorrow? He'd give us a different answer. Under Popper's interpretation, the probability would be seen as the tendency of the relevant conditions today to lead to sunrise tomorrow. Here, the conditions include the Earth's rotation, its position relative to the sun, and the laws of physics that govern these phenomena. Popper would likely argue that, given these conditions, the tendency for the sun to rise is essentially 100%, assuming no drastic change in the physical conditions or laws of nature today. This approach essentially says that the probability is not about how often the sun has risen in the past, but how the physical conditions of today will lead to it rising tomorrow. But it sounds exactly like Bayesian probability to me. What's the difference? Bayesian and frequentist, these two, they can be put in the same box. They are different from each other, but they agree with one thing. They have a philosophy behind them. They assume that determinism is something real. If we could have an infinite amount of data and all the possible information about the system, we could predict everything that is going to happen in the future without 100% of certainty. But we never can do it, so that's why we can only have better models or worse models, but no perfect models. Propensity probability is more something apl applicable to physics, specifically to quantum mechanics. It has this philosophy behind that believes that a system is intrinsically probabilistic and you cannot even if you have all the data in the world if you have even if you have all the variables you will never be able to have a perfect model determinism is just impossible it doesn't exist and that's the view of quantum mechanics for example and these two philosophies i know it's not mathematics not physics it's philosophy but it, it guides you in the equations and in the formulas to develop really totally different models in the end but has it actually helped in the past like to predict some sort of catastrophe or something like that. So many times. Hurricane forecasting, earthquake preparedness, disease outbreak management, and many others. Like during the 2014 Ebola outbreak in West Africa. Probabilistic models were used to predict the spread of the disease, helping to allocate resources effectively and plan interventions that slowed the epidemic. Flood risks and even nuclear safety have all benefited from one probabilistic model or another. Honestly, without probability, who knows what disasters we could have had. Now, I have a question for you. What's the probability that you'll click on this video right here? Somewhere right here. I think they will. It's pretty cool.